Non-Monogamy Help is a podcast where your questions about open, non-monogamous or polyamorous relationships are answered. Our host, Lola Felix, will consult a licensed therapist with over a decade of experience to address your problems. Names and locations have been changed or censored to keep your questions anonymous. You're listening to Non-Monogamy Help, the podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 129 of the Non-Monogamy Help podcast. I'm Lola Phoenix. Please send your questions if you have them to ask at nonmonogamyhelp.com and they'll either be in the podcast or the column anonymously. You're more than welcome to choose which one you'd like. I would appreciate your support by reading the columns and listening to all the podcasts if you want to at nonmonogamyhelp.com. And you can subscribe actually on the website now. I have a newsletter where you get it on Fridays as soon as it goes live, so you can subscribe there. If you want to join the email newsletter list and get them on Wednesdays before they go live, you can go to nonmonogamyhelp.com forward slash email. And Nonmonogamy Help is on Twitter and Instagram at Nonmonogamy Help. And I've actually joined TikTok, which may be like the worst time ever. Ever to join TikTok, but I went for it and I'm actually enjoying it a bit. So it's at nonmonohelp on TikTok. So feel free to follow there as well. I am actually redirecting people away from my Patreon because Patreon actually has me on an account level where I have to charge people per release rather than a flat fee per month. And a lot of people sign up and they get confused at what they're signing up for and they get overcharged and then they unsubscribe. So I actually would rather, if you want to support a little bit more, please subscribe via my website. There is a podcast shout out tier on there too. So you can join at the podcast shout out tier and then I will read your name with your permission at the end of the podcast. Let's get to this week's discussion question. If this is the first time you're hearing this every week before I get into the question that someone sent me, I go and ask a discussion question that you can use with your friends, family, or anyone that you want to get to know. I can't believe I said family. You know what I mean. And then I also answer it myself a little bit briefly to give you some context. This week's discussion question is, what do you do when you're away from people that you miss? I think this is really interesting because a lot of people have that situation where they open a relationship or they start in a relationship and then they have that kind of first time that their partner is out with somebody else and they kind of have that complicated feeling of anxiety, understandable feeling of anxiety, etc. and so forth. And there are some things that I have done in the past when I've missed folks or when I've really struggled with that. One thing that I kind of recommend to folks is thinking about maybe sending or writing a letter or writing a card. I used to write cards uh, to my partner when we were still together, when whenever I felt like I missed them, when we had time apart, I would just sit down and like buy a card from the store or something like that and, and write down a card and really focus on the things I was appreciating about our relationship. And I think that's a really good thing to do when you're apart and you're missing your partner or you're dealing with some of the feelings that non-monogamy can bring to you. So yeah, let me repeat the discussion question. What do you do when you are away from people that you miss? Let's get to this week's question. I'm going through a rough patch with my husband. We've been really struggling and I find it really difficult to be with my boyfriend of six months during this time. I don't feel like talking to him or doing anything with him either. It doesn't really feel right. Like I just want to sit with everything that comes up and that takes time. How do I deal with all of this without disappointing someone? Before we get to this week's answer, I want to quickly remind you of this column's episode or this episode's sponsor, BetterHelp. Quite often, a lot of times in my podcasts, I encourage people to seek therapy because a lot of people should get therapy, not even just non-monogamous people. Everyone should, I think, mostly everyone should seek a therapist. And for people who are in polyamorous relationships, it may be difficult to find a therapist that understands polyamory, who's in your area locally or within your budget. BetterHelp allows you to find therapists at any any time of day, and they do offer some uh, financial aid. You can get 10% off your first month by using the promo code non help at checkout, or you can go to betterhelp.com forward slash non help. Let's get to this week's answer. So essentially, you can't make your decisions of what you want to do based off of whether or not you're going to disappoint someone. Because here's the thing. Adults can handle disappointment. 
and it's not your responsibility to completely and utterly manage the emotions of somebody else. And I know that kind of sounds callous and maybe a bit heartless at times, but the problem is, is that if you make all of your decisions based off of whether or not someone's going to be disappointed, then you'll never break up with anybody. You'll never do anything that could be potentially difficult for people, even if going through that difficulty is something that needs to happen or is something that won't kill them or is something that you can't necessarily avoid. So I don't think that you should make decisions based off of whether or not somebody's going to be disappointed. I think that if you need space, then you need space and you need to ask for it. And it may suck when you have to put down boundaries or you have to ask for things that you know aren't going to make somebody else happy. But at the end of the day, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. And it doesn't mean that it shouldn't happen. And it doesn't mean that you should make your decisions based off of whether or not they're going to disappoint someone. However, the big caveat I have with this situation, because you don't really give any context as to what the rough patch is with your husband, why it is you're going through that rough patch, what it means to be in the rough patch, and you don't really explore why it is that you're not feeling like talking to your boyfriend at this time. So that's really difficult for me to figure out what it is about this situation that's making it difficult, right? Because maybe the rough patch that you're going through with your husband is that your husband isn't interested in polyamory and the reason you don't feel like talking with your partner is because every time you do, your husband has a emotional reaction to it and you struggle to be able to cope with that. Or it could be maybe your boyfriend isn't actually really supportive and is, you know, you have a history of whenever you try to talk to your boyfriend about any emotional problems or difficulties you have, he kind of complains about it and you don't want to hear him complain. And because all you're going through right now is emotional difficulties, you don't feel like talking to him or doing anything with him because you feel like you're kind of lying. So you see how like those two situations are extremely different and I would advise different things in those two different different situations. I feel like if the reason why you are avoiding talking to your boyfriend has something to do with trying to save the relationship with your husband, I don't know is that that's necessarily the best choice. Or if by, by that I mean if you're feeling the draw as many people do whenever they're in open relationships or they start, and I don't even know if your relationship started open or not, but a lot of people feel the draw when there's a rough patch or some difficulties to close their quote unquote primary relationship because it makes sense. Like it's not, it's not necessarily an ignorant idea, right? Like, okay, opening has caused us a lot of difficulties. Let's close it, try to address the issues and then open it again. I get where that comes from. However, the problem with that is that sometimes the situations, just like in monogamous relationships, right? Like sometimes the situations that come up only come up when you're actually in side of the problem or the situations can only really be dealt with whilst they're happening and you can't necessarily predict or really address the emotional issues of a situation when you're outside of it because you're not going through the most difficult aspects of it because you're sitting outside of it. So if the desire coming from you to avoid talking to your boyfriend comes from this idea that like, I need to put this one relationship on ice because I need to fix this other relationship. The problem is that there's going to be all sorts of things, like even if everything was going perfectly between you and your husband, there's going to be all sorts of things that could come up. Like you could have a sudden death in your family or your husband could lose his job or something could happen where your focus is pulled away from the immediate situation into a crisis mode. And it's not as if we have relationships and we decide that, oh no, I've just lost my job, so I'm gonna dump my partner and deal with this job loss and then get back together with my partner. Like, if you need to dump your partner because you've lost your job because being with your partner won't actually help or support that situation, then that does say a lot about that relationship or about how you feel about your own skills and navigating a crisis situation while being in a relationship. So if you feel the need to put on ice or do something involving with, your boyfriend whilst you're going through this situation, then is that because your relationship with your boyfriend is not that supportive? Is that because of 
the rough patch being surrounded in the issue of being non-monogamous or however I said that really weird, but you get what I'm saying. Like, it really depends on why it is that you feel like you're not interested in doing anything with him. And yeah, this letter is so short that there's no real indications of whether or not either relationship is supportive, how supportive, or in which way. So it's really, really hard for me to advise how to handle the situation. But to answer the question that you said, which is how do I deal with this all with how do I deal with this all without disappointing someone? The answer is that you can't. You can't deal with situations sometimes without disappointing somebody. And in the end, that really shouldn't be your primary goal, right? Because you're going to disappoint people in life and that's just part of it. And adults can handle disappointment. You're not responsible for another grown adult's management of their own emotions and you shouldn't be made responsible. Obviously, like you wanna be considerate and kind. You don't wanna be a jerk about things. And if you do need to tell your boyfriend that you need space, there are kind ways to do that. And you can say, look, I'm going through a rough patch. I need a little bit of a break. And that might be really difficult for your boyfriend. And he may feel like you are prioritizing your relationship with your husband over your relationship with him. And he would be very fair to feel that way. And he would be very fair to feel disappointed, especially if he feels like he's been being emotionally supportive or trying to be there for you. But at the end of the day, if for whatever reason this situation isn't working out for you, pretending like it is really isn't a viable option. Pretending like you're okay when you're not really isn't going to fix the situation. It's probably just going to make everything worse. So you really need to get try to get more comfortable with the idea not only that, like you can disappoint someone and you're not a terrible person for disappointing someone, but also that grown adults can handle disappointment. And if there is a person who is incapable of handling disappointment, then their feelings as a grown adult are also theirs to manage and theirs to address. And their emotional issues, if they have them, are also theirs to address. And it's not your responsibility to manage that. So as long as you're kind, as long as you're nice, as long as you're honest then I think it's fine. But I also think that it's actually much worse. Like if you're talking about like realms of disappointment and realms of unhappiness, in my opinion, like maybe there are people who disagree, but I think I would rather know immediately than for someone to pretend like they're okay around me and them not actually be okay. Like I'd rather just know the truth and I'd rather hear it right away than have someone be with me who doesn't really want to be with me. Like I I would never ever want someone who genuinely doesn't want to be with me. Like, obviously we all have ups and downs in relationships. Obviously we have times in relationships where we're frustrated with people, et cetera, and so forth. But genuinely, if someone did not want to be with me, the last thing I would ever want is for them to pretend. And I have met people who do want people to pretend, if even if they don't feel anything anymore. And those people aren't necessarily what I'd call emotionally healthy. So also think about it from that standpoint. Like, you're scared of disappointing someone, but pretending like you're okay with something and pretending like you want to go along with a situation that you don't want to go along with is not not going to disappoint someone. And it may actually disappoint someone way more than you just being honest. So yeah, I hope that helps and good luck. Before we get to the conclusion of this podcast episode, I want to tell you guys about something. I have always felt really, really strongly that if you have family members, especially older family members, we live in a fantastic digital age. And it's a great time. If you've never done this, please set a reminder on your calendar to use the tools of the digital age to record your family members, talk to them about their lives, take video if you can, and listen to their stories. I think this is actually really important because my great grandma died in 2013, and I actually still have recordings of her her voice. And those recordings are really, really precious to me. And I go back and listen to them now and then, And I wish I had more recordings and I wish I had like video of her and things like that. 
And it's such a great thing to have. And if you have never done it, then I would really, really suggest you do it. There's something that I recently found called a Life Real Academy. You can find it at lifereal.co or just look for a Life Real Academy. And it's basically a little course that will teach you how to do like a life real of your loved one, which is so cool and so amazing. I would consider taking it if I had more photos and more things to put in a reel about my great grandma. But if you've ever wanted to not just record stuff, but like produce a little kind of video about your family member, and it could be a great gift, like they don't, it could be something for their like 90th birthday or something like that, or just something for you to have because you don't realize how important this kind of stuff is until that person is gone. And I've seen a lot of cases where people have, for example, old voicemails on their phone from like their loved one and that's passed away and then they switch carriers or something happens and they lose that stuff. So like you live in a digital age, like you don't need professional, super high tech equipment to make this kind of stuff. So I would check out lifereal.co. This isn't a sponsor or ad from them. I just found them and I feel really passionate about this because of how much I really cherish these recordings of my great grandma and how important they are to me. And yeah, I think you should check it out. And definitely if you don't take the academy course, then definitely just record your family members whenever you get the chance, like talk to them about their lives, listen to their stories. It's a really, really important thing that we should all do, especially since we have access to really easy recording equipment, like your phone and your, your most people's phones take excellent video and you don't need to be a professional. You just, even just having the clips, I promise you, like you will absolutely thank yourself for doing that. So yeah, just a little bit reminder before the conclusion, just cause I found it really cool. I feel really passionate about that. And I wanted you guys to know about it. So yeah, it's called lifereal.co if you want to take the course. But otherwise, just a friendly reminder, set it, go on your phone now, set your little task. I know all of you got Google Calendar because that's what polyamorous people have. So set yourself a little task to bring your recording equipment or or record with your phone or whatever you want to do the next time you go and visit a family member and make that a priority. Thank you for listening to episode 129 of the Namanagami Hell podcast. If you want to support what I do, I'm encouraging people now to sign up on my website rather than Patreon in the podcast support tier. And if you sign up on that tier, then your name will be read at the end of the podcast. This week's current patrons are Laura Boylan, Chris Albury, Jones, Duke, Nikki Jones, James Wartell, Justin Calm, and Aaliyah. If for whatever reason you can't do anything monetary, because I understand cost of living crisis, it's absolutely fine. Other ways you can support the podcast, there is a free subscription on the website where you get the columns and podcasts in your inbox. You can sign up there or at my email list if you want them early on Wednesdays at nonmonogamyhelp.com forward slash email. If you find the podcast, rate and review it on iTunes and Spotify. That really helps. Or take a screenshot and share it to your Instagram stories whenever you're listening to it. That would be really, really helpful too. Please do things like that. Spread the word. It helps me get it out there to new people. That's all for this week. We'll get a new column next Friday and another podcast episode in a fortnight. Thank you for listening. You've been listening to Non-Monogamy Help. The music was done by Chris Albury-Jones at 